The Brand X Podcast is sponsored by Audio Editing Solutions. Editing your podcast, just not your thing? Go to audioeditingsolutions.com and see how affordable professional audio editing can be. Welcome to another episode of the Brand X Podcast. My name is John, and with me today, as always, is my co-host, Deuce. How you doing, Deuce? Good. How you doing today? I am just hoping, just hoping that my mouth works just enough to get through this podcast. I don't know what it is lately, but my mouth and my mind have had a disconnect. Like I will want to say something or think I'm saying something, and something else will come out of my mouth. Do, like you, the other- do you have the, your mind is working faster than your mouth can catch up to. I think that's probably the problem. Yeah. My mouth is slowing down. My mind is going too fast. Right. And there's some kind of disconnect because even in the last episode that we did, we, you know, that whole ammonia thing, I thought I was saying pneumonia, but apparently <laughs> what happened was either I mumbled and it came out ammonia because at first I thought he was, you were messing with me. But when I went back to listen in the, you know, after we got done and I went to edit and I went to listen, I said, Psh, that's ammonia. <laughs> that's ammonia. Yeah. So, but then, a lot of people say that anyway, which is all right. part of the gag. It's all part of the fun. Right. Yeah. So, how is your ammonia? Any better? Uh, I am much better, thanks. Um, I can speak. I still get a little run down, uh, but I've been able to go out and play and um, do things. Uh, this weekend, Diane and I went to a wedding of a, a friend and coworker, and that was a blast. So, that was really my first uh, first class trip after getting over the ammonia. Well, that's great. And I'll tell you what, this is episode 23. And when we first started this podcast, I wanted to, first of all, get you comfortable being behind the mic, get you comfortable with the technology, get you comfortable with the flow of a podcast. And uh, you've been doing swimmingly. You have uh, brought things to the table. You now have a soundboard where you can actually play sound effects. And I think we can start to do the show that we really want to do. And I... Uh, yes, and one of watch, the things watch, watch me choke terrifically now. <laughs> well, one of the things we have to do, which is my fault, is to be more specific. We got to be more specific more with specific. our. We have to be more specific with our release dates, because what happens is we do like this two-hour show, and then I'm in there trying to cut out the bad parts. Or this is the other thing we do. Where did we find out on Google? Like me and you were just talking in a room. And we start looking up things in Google. Well, I have to kind of go and get all that stuff. You have to go in there with a knife and cut all that stuff out of there. Right. So what I would like to do is do an hour show. And this is going to take some prep. Like we just can't, we, me, I, just can't come in five minutes before we're ready to record and say, okay, what are we going to, what are we going to talk about? You know, and then start searching things and all. I want to be able to read more, do more. And I say that, and my best bit for this episode, I can't get to the website. Because, yeah, but it might come back, like Lassie. It might come back. Uh, one of the things that was going on with us, with me last week, was that whole cyber attack on the East Coast where it took down Twitter, right. PayPal, and stuff like that. Netflix. Netflix. Well, one of the sites that I use, actually, the site we're recording on right now is called Cast. And I record another podcast with uh, my co host from Off in the Weeds, Jess. Mm-hmm. And Elsie, and it's a podcast. It's called She Podcast, and it's a podcast about podcasting from a warm, woman's perspective. So what they do is they come in and they record like we're doing right now and cast, you know. And I play their little sound effects and everything. Matter of fact, I have Jessica right here. Harry, Harry Balzac. Hi, Jessica. How you doing? <laughs> so you went with that one, huh? <laughs> how are you? I'm doing fine. How you doing? How you doing? See, so Jessica's here is right with me. She's here with me now. And, uh, you know, she's not a real big fan of us people from South Jersey. She calls us South Jersey numb nuts. So we were doing the show. And after we got done recording and everything, I tried to get the recordings off a of cast. And they just didn't download. Well, not, and that's not something that doesn't – that happens a lot with this cast that we use. It's called cast, but it's a recording website. Right. Okay. So – um I recorded another podcast with somebody else. I think we even recorded. And no, it was with Jess off in the weeds. So I download that and I keep going back and it's not it's not downloading. So it's Friday around 11 o'clock and I send them a 
nicely worded email. Hey, I'm having issues here. Can you please see what's going on with this thing? I need these files because the show goes live Monday. Well, you know what happens there. Get nothing, nothing back, nothing. I'm like, oh my god. So now did they just said, didn't. Did they just not get your message because of the crash that happened, or who, they were just busy? Knows? Maybe they got inundated. Maybe a bunch of people were doing this, and their staff got inundated. But anyhow, today, right. after we no she podcast for the day, they finally answered me back and said that yeah, because of that, we, they got hit hard. Their servers got hit hard with that whole hack. And that the files are there and that they did something on their end, the voodoo that they do, and that I could download it. But now that puts me back like two days. Right. You got to recapture all that work. Recapture, got to get in there. Plus, you know, what happens is I have things scheduled for this week. So right now, you know what happens? You know who gets it up the ass? Jackass. Jackass. And you know why? Because Jackass always takes it up the ass. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I was waiting for you to use my thing there. Jackass always takes it up the that ass. That one? <laughs> Yours isn't as good as mine. takes it up the ass. See, this is better. Jackass always takes it up the ass. See, what happened is last time when we did Jack, see, because Jackass always takes it up the ass. There you go. Because mm-hmm. Jackass always takes it up the ass. <laughs> <laughs> so you have to watch what you say on a podcast because you can always go back and pull the audio. Right. And then as becomes, Jackass learned. As Jackass learns. <laughs> But Jackass gets smart because now all of a sudden Jackass doesn't say anything that I can pull anymore, which isn't, that's not too good. The burned hand teaches best. That's true. So anyhow, to make a short story long, I got the audio today. So I was a little nervous about continuing to use this because you do an hour and a half show and then somebody, you can't get the audio. You want to kill somebody. Right. No! So anyhow, how does it will it take you? Do you think to retrace your steps for for do, for all those you know problems with cast that you lost the sheep? Well, podcast just the one and, just the one show that I lost was hard. Well, I have it now, so now I have to just go back and edit it. Okay, which I was working on right before, right up to where we started to talk right now. So gotcha. to our listeners, to you guys, to all fifty of you. <laughs> 50 plus 50 plus of you who are listening right now uh i'm making i'm making a promise that we record on monday one week tuesday the next week so the days that we record on monday i'm going to put it out on thursday the days that we record on tuesday i will put it out on friday or should i just give myself that extra day and why don't you just give yourself the buffer and just release on friday so we'll release on friday Okay, right. so Friday morning on your way to work. Because I'm the, I'm the X factor on that. On, well, like, yeah, it's you, my work schedule. That's the boondoggle. Well, the, then, and it's my work schedule why I can't edit it. So what I'm trying to do right now is to make this more like three is comedy. They just roll. There's no, you know, they make a mistake. Heck, on the 200th episode, uh, Jason had to go to the bathroom. He played a song. He didn't just hit pause and, and stop. He played a song, went to the bathroom, came back, sat down in the chair, and continued to do that. Uh, I think that's kind of what we're going to do here. So you're, it might, you know, warts and all, ladies and gentlemen. So what am I going to do with this catheter? <laughs> catheter? <laughs> <laughs> the problems with you and I are that we get in here, we start jawing, and next thing you know, we look up and it's two well, hours. That's it. We, we just have too much fun and the time runs away from us. Exactly. So let's get to the business, the business of the podcast. The business. So I was talking, I tell you, the podcast, the funniest podcast to ever be done is if me and the Jimmy. Mm-hmm. It's the Jimmy. Oh, Jimmy, what do you do? What do you do? What do you, it's the Jimmy. Oh, Jimmy, what do you do? What do you, he calls me like on a Saturday morning or something like that. He calls me and we start talking and we do a show on the phone, but I don't even know if we would be able to release that show. <laughs> Sometimes I would, but there's other times I can't. The one thing that he talked about, which I, I have to tell you the story today, is uh, his father, my uncle, Tony, as we call Big T. He's one of those guys that, you know, nowadays, if you need tires for your car, you just got you get new tires. Nobody goes out and tries to buy used tires anymore. You know, back yeah. in the day, you my could. My grandfather was the king of that. King of used tires, right? Right. Well, now with the four-wheel drive, all-wheel drive, 
if you get a flat tire and you've got 20,000 miles on your car, you can't replace one tire. You have to replace all four mm -hmm. or the circumference of the, the new tire, you know, the new tire with the old tire will end up ruining the transmission. Yeah. Cause they don't wear evenly. They don't wear evenly. So if you get a bad tire and you get a flat tire and you've got 25,000 miles. Now you, you can't just put a flat one tire on. You got to put on four. You know what happens? Yeah, it's tough titty. always takes it up yeah. the ass. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Tough titty. You're buying four new tires. You're buying four new tires to the tune of almost $600. Right. Well, Depending on the size of the tire. Exactly. If you got those monstrous tires or- 16, you know, 18 inch tires they yeah, have you now. Could, right. You could be pushing a K. Exactly. Exactly. Well, back in the day- Big T, um, he got a Nova, and he worked at this place, uh, the Salem Nuclear Plant, and it's a pretty good drive from here. Mm -hmm. So he used to be a painter down there, and uh, a couple of buddies got, you know, they all, so what you would do is they would all go down, they would carpool down because it was a pretty good ride. So the one guy, Sacky, his name, everybody had a nickname, Sacky said, you know what, Tony, those tires look bad. We better get new tires on this thing before we have a, a problem. And uh, Tony's like, we... What, are you speaking French? You mean I need to get new tires? He goes, well, so Tony figures instead of going buying new tires, he'll go to the junkyard, find another Nova, and look at the tires and get the tires and the rims and everything, right? And just right. swap the rims out. Problem solved. And he, he was so proud of himself. He probably got the tires for the same price that he would have got for one brand new tire. So he's going on his way. He's going to Salem Nuclear Plant. He's driving along. They're all driving and talking, and, you know, they're going along. And, you know, the next thing you know... Just all of a sudden. <laughs> what happened? Oh, I can't believe that. One of those tires I got from the junkyard blew out. All right, come on. Let's get out. And they get out and they change the tire and they go home. So, you know, they get in the next morning. They're talking about, oh, I hope the tires are all right. Oh, it'll be fine. So they get in there driving, driving at a nuclear plant. And then they're going along and all of a sudden. He's talking about this and that. and <laughs> you got to be kidding me. Come on, Saggy, get out of the car. We got to change a tire. So they change a tire, go to work, come back. And I guess at a plant like that, they work like 12-hour shifts. So it's almost like a full day when you go. You know, it's it, you know, you get up early, you got to go. It's in the dark or whatever time it is. Yeah, you're pretty wrung out by the time you're done. I'll bet. Yeah, so then you, you got to change a tire. So next day, they're driving. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what are the chances, right? <laughs> are you kidding me? <laughs> So here they found out that with the tires they got were retreads. <laughs> oh, not, not only were they out of a junkyard, they were retreaded junkyard they were retreaded tires. Retreaded junkyard tires. So he said, "Heck with that." I said, "Did he wait for the fourth one to blow out?" I mean, just, listen, we only got one more. <laughs> oh, you think I'm going to waste this tire? <laughs> well, in for a penny, in for a pound, right? It was. A <laughs> He told me that story, and like now, I have tears in my eyes. <laughs> oh, my Uncle Tony. He would do stuff like that all the time. Like, they would go to, and that was a good thing. That was something that everybody did. Like, if you needed an alternator, let's say back in the early seven, late 60s, early 70s, you needed an alternator, that thing could cost $40 new. But you right. could go to the junkyard and get it for 10 and you figure, well, an alternator is not, you know, it does it, it, as long as it's in in one the same piece. Yeah, and it's not like the alternators back then were pulling as much juice as the cars today are. And yeah, you know, they were all mechanical. There was no computers on them, and right, you know, all that diagnostic stuff that we got now. So, uh, but you can't do that stuff anymore. You can't. No. Like a lot of guys like to work. Well, you're a car enthusiast. You have you're a big vet enthusiast. Right. Do you do your own work on your cars, or you kind of take them to a mechanic? Uh, well, the new one, it's – you basically can do uh, basic maintenance, which means you can do an oil change, and that's pretty much it. You Be can't do any – you can't do plugs and stuff like that anymore, can you? Uh, no, they're, they're buried back there because – not to get too technical, but um, if you look at an old car versus a modern-day car when you have the hood open, if you notice, the engines are set so far back 
right. that they're like encased in the firewall. Right. And you really need to have some car's special tools or you have to get it from the bottom, which means you need a lift. Now, I have a lift. I could do that. But um, those plugs are buried so far down in the block now. It's it you, takes you, you really need some. Yeah, you got to be like a, a, a contortionist and have some special wrenches just to get in there. So now my 75, I could do anything because that's just an old fashioned car. It's all mechanical. It's a carburetor, four belts. In fact, I, I took it and I had the oil changed today. And uh, just to get it ready for the winter, uh, had it lubed up, had them do a check. I need some new belts, which I knew. But, um, you yeah, know, it's good. It's a it's a decent car. It's uh, got low mileage for a 42-year-old car. Do you – does that car still have points or was it electronic? That's ignition? That was the first year that they put electronic ignition on, uh, the, okay. on the Corvette starting in 75. Probably, probably all General Motors cars because generally they would do everything right down the line. But, yeah, if that was a 74, you're talking points, you're talking condensers, you're talking a mechanical tack, which would just break. Um, most of the cars back then had mechanical tachometer. Now we're speaking French. Right. And if you spun too much, you would break the gears and that was that. And that's when they went to electronic tachometers. All the cars did. Well, it was funny because, you know, back in the day, my father was a mechanic. My dad was a mechanic. My grandfather was a mechanic. My cousins Mm -hmm. are mechanics. Uh, so when I would work in the shop, it would be, it was time for a tune up. You had to go get, you know, spark plugs. Uh, Point condensers and distributor cap oil change. Yeah, and you that yeah. was a tune up, right? Well, there's no such thing as points and condensers. So now the best thing if you go in for a tune up, they'll change maybe four plugs if they can get to them. Four out of the eight, or if you have six, they might be able to get to two of them. Right, and that's it. You know, it takes an act of Congress to try to get to the the plugs. Well, did you ever see? Um, I have two Impalas. I got an 04 Impala, which my son drives now. Right. And I got yeah, an yeah, 11 yeah. Impala. All right, well, the battery's in the front, mm-hmm. but on that platform that General Motors uses, if you were to open the hood, there's a strut connecting the front frame to the radiator support frame, yes. and it's bolted down, and the battery's under that. So if you want to change the battery, you got to get a, a wrench, you know, a ratchet wrench, and you got to take off that strut, and that space for the battery barely holds the battery. I mean, you can't get a fart in there after you've got the battery in that space. It's so tight. So you're, you know, you're talking about you you better wear gloves because you're going to bark your knuckles. You're going to scrape skin off. Um, you know, it's, it, it's a tight fit. So, so I mean, I, that stuff like that I've done, I've replaced a couple batteries over the years in those cars. You know, that's anything that I can do, I'll do. But, so the kind of t- has, they've kind of taken our, our hobby of being able to work on our own cars. They've kind of basically taken that away from you. Even if you got the parts, even if you wanted to do all that stuff, most of the time, the tools, the special tools you need for this and that cost more than the parts. Right. Well, if you have, um, you know how the new headlamp assemblies are on all the cars. They're mad. If correct. you buy a whole, I bought two of them versus turkeys. Right. So in an Impala brand new, they're like 280 bucks. Well, if you want to change the light bulbs, you got to go in from the back, unscrew it. It's not that hard to do. You can do it. All right. right. Well, on Cadillacs, which use the high intensity discharge bulbs, though I don't know how you get to the bulbs. But I, my buddy has a Cadillac CTS, and we popped the hood and we looked at because one of his bulbs was burned out. And I said, "Dude, you're going to a dealer now." And of course, took it to a dealer, and you know, at eighty five, ninety dollars an hour plus the cost of the bulb. Yeah, just to change a light bulb. I mean, it wound up costing him about a buck and a half for a light bulb, right? So, because it in, in that particular sense, it's like, and, and I think it's by design. They really don't want you to do any work. They want those dealers to make the money on you know, well, because parts and labor. There's nothing to do anymore. Most cars, you don't even tune them up for a hundred thousand miles. Now, well, they last longer now. We exactly. we talked about that before. The cars do last a lot longer, but the trade off is uh, you break down on the road. Well, let me, call tri- let me call AAA up and get the flatbed out here because, you know, you ain't short of changing a tire like you, the big T was doing. Right. You know, you ain't doing anything else. Oh, if you were going, all right, this brings back memories with my father. If we were going on a trip to Florida, he'd always have an alternator. He'd have his toolbox, an alternator, a starter, belt. Yep. He'd have all that stuff, spark plug points and everything in the car. So if anything. Choking carb cleaner. Yep. Yeah. Had, had a jumper w- cables, obviously. WD-40 and some electrical tape. 
Right. Could fix anything. You could get it. You, and even if you couldn't fix it, at least you could get to the next town. Right. And, and get it to a mechanic that could do. Yeah, a couple you know. radiator hoses. Right. See, that's the, that, was the good, that was the nice thing about mechanical cars than what we've got now with all everything. And, and that's everything. Televisions. You, you know, you know, Joe summed it up nicely. You know, back then we had mechanics. Now we got technicians. You know what the difference is, right? No. What's the difference between a mechanic and a technician? A mechanic repairs things. A technician replaces things. And that's where we're at now. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, that no, wasn't a joke. I mean, that's – if you think about it, if your car breaks or your TV breaks or whatever, they just replace a module. They replace a part. They don't repair anything. It's Everything's disposable now. That's true. That is true. That is – yeah, yeah. I mean, well so – you were in a, And you were in the elevator business. Like how often did you – how bad did something have to be before you absolutely totally replaced it? It was probably just something electrical at the, at the at the most, right? Well, you know, the same thing happened in the elevator business. Before, they would have these relays, and each mm-hmm. relay would have a contact, all right? So, you know, back in the day, if you had a bad relay, you would replace the contact. But then they took the relays, and they, they made these relays encased in plastic. So what would happen is if the contact in the relay went bad, you would replace the whole relay. Now, okay. everything's microprocessor. Right. So all that is on a circuit board. So now it's not even a relay anymore. You got to replace the whole circuit board. That's what I was getting at. Probably yeah. you're just pulling out a whole panel, a you're relay, pa- a circuit board panel, and that's it. And right. Like, well, we hope this is the one. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, you're right. And uh, and pretty soon it'll be where they just take a box and they just take. Hey, what's wrong with it? I don't know. You just put a brand new box in there, and then boom, the, the whole the elevator runs again. And then you send the old box out to somebody who's a mechanic who can figure out what's wrong with it and fixes it. Right. If you've got an old car like I've got now, um, you know, you're talking carburation, you're talking um, everything's mechanical, like I said. Right. Um, It's getting harder and harder to find people that can fix a carburetor. Yes. And if you can find a guy that knows what he's doing, you're going to pay an arm and a leg, you know, but, you know, it's it's getting to be like um, a lost art. It really is because, you know, we haven't carbureted car, brand new cars since the mid-80s, I guess. That's when fuel injection came back. That is true. And, you know, it's the same thing with uh, the elevators. Uh, yes, the brand new elevators, you know, there's not really much to fix. But if you had like an old elevator that had a motor generator unit and stuff like that, and the generator had to be adjusted where you would use, you know, you would use taps on a generator. You would move a wire from one connection to another to get the dot re- the desired results that you wanted, you show, you do that to a mechanic now, and they look at you like you got four heads. What am I going to do with that? Yeah. How do I even fix that? You need an old guy. You got to bring an old guy in, right? And exactly. Then you got to buy him a cup of coffee, and you got to listen to four hours of stories. <laughs> Back in my day, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you the one day that we was doing. Oh, oh my God! Just shoot me, <laughs> shoot me in the head, like Daffy Duck. Kill me now! <laughs> Kill me now! I wish I had that. <laughs> Shoot him now. <laughs> rabbit season or yeah. duck season. Yeah. I mean, it, it is a trade-off. I mean, yeah, cars and, and things generally last longer. <laughs> you keep out of this. He does not have to shoot you now. He doesn't does so have to shoot me now. So. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, it, it, is a, it is a thing. So, um, Rabbit season, duck season, duck season, rabbit season. It's duck season. It's the best cartoon of all time. Best of cartoon best. of all time. Yeah. I love the way his bill spins around in like six different times. Yeah, it's on the top of his head. It's like, in the back br- of his head. It's... He brings it down and goes, you're despicable. Yeah. Eyes are lower. Now, see, no, oh. one, no one that's over, under the, over the age of 30 knows Have that you that? watched any of those lately on TV? I don't, can't even find them anymore. Well, if you can, them and the three Sto- – like Three Stooges episodes were known by – I'm a big Three Stooges fan. I know anything – anything you want to know about Are the Stooges, I Are you trying to give me the double talk? That's right. I sure am, Jerome. And uh, what what you got is they've – because everything got so touchy-feely and politically correct, uh, a Three Stooges – if you went to the movies back in the day and when we were kids and you watched a Three Stooges episode, they were 22 minutes long. Right. Now, if you find the Three Stooges, it's like 3 a.m. in the morning, and they're like cut down to about nine minutes. Really? They're, they are cut so much they, that the stories sometimes don't even make sense. And if you didn't know – if you never saw the original back in the day when we were – like when we were kids, 
you would have no idea what was going on in the episode. They are so cut up with all the extra, they, what they think is too violent. Well, I remember know. the last time that the Three Stooges were actually, actually on, and I, going back to when I was a kid, I thought like every ep- usually every episode was like They 12. would play three an hour. Yeah, three an hour. Because they would cut a little bit off the beginning. They would cut a little bit off, but they were pretty much intact. Yeah. Because a two reel or it was called a two reel, a little history here on Three Stooges. Back in the day, when you I'm went to the to theaters, think, but happens. when you went to the theaters, you had a newsreel. Yes. Okay. And then you had um, a short feature, which was generally a Three Stooges cartoon or a Bugs Bunny or a Walt Disney film or whatever. And they called them two reelers because they were two 11 minute reels of film. Okay. And so it was a 22 minute episode. And and that's so you would go to the movies, you would watch a Three Stooges feature, coming attractions, a newsreel, and then they would start the movie. It was a production. Right. Now we now we watch seventy two minutes of coming attractions. Right. Exactly. You know, and and sit through a bad movie more than likely. But uh so then when it went to T V, they cut a couple of minutes out of each one, so they would have an hour's worth of T V and that's what we watched when we were kids. They were pretty much intact. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's one of my favorite things is the the Three Stooges, one of my favorite um, Girls shorts. hate, generally as a rule, girls hate the Three Stooges. Because they don't know funny. They don't really yeah. know funny. Yeah. If you find a woman that likes the Three Stooges, that's she, like hitting oil in your in your backyard. Yes. Because it's like she's being, got a sense of humor. Yeah, right. It's like being Jed Clampett, you know. <laughs> it's the same kind of girl that would be a Howard Stern fan that gets it. Yeah. I think more girls – would get that than the Stooges because all the girls see is the slapping and the violence, right. the so-called violence, you know, but, you know, uh, it's different. And then you have the Little Rascals. They just evaporated off the face of the earth. I, I never really got the, the Little Rascals. Oh. Uh, they, they were kind of funny uh, just as a kid. But then as you got older, you grew out of it. But the Stooges would stick with you. Right. And then as <laughs> they couldn't even play those Little Rascals because they were so racist. Oh, yeah. Well. Yeah, we didn't know that at the time. You know, now you look at, oh my God. You, you see know. something like you didn't know about it then. You didn't even think about it. But they play it now. You're like, you give, you know, your head cocks to the side like a dog that just heard a fart. Yeah. Um, you're like, ooh, you know, <laughs> oof. <oof-a. laughs> <laughs> so, anyhow. That was uh, Hal Roach Productions. He started the Little Rascals. Oh, he's dead. He Gotta oh, be they're dead. All dead. They're, they're all dead. They're all dead. Everyone's dead. Spanky McFarlane lived a long time. He was on an episode of Cheers in the opening sequence once. He was? Oh, yeah. And if you looked, you knew it was Spanky. He looked exactly the same as he did when he was three when he started. He was just yeah, a probably, short, round guy with that chubby face. And no hair. Yeah. Well, I think he had a hat on in the episode of Cheers, just like he okay. did in The Little Rascals. He always had that, like, that weird beanie on or something. I'll have to go look that up. Yeah, he was on an opening sequence of Cheers. I got you. I don't know why, but well, because he's just because he needed money. Because <laughs> like, get it. Here's your two fifty, Spanky. They didn't even two fifty. They just gave him real beer, yeah. probably. <laughs> well, anyhow, um, so you got me hooked on a pod. You told me about a podcast. Wait a minute. Oh, you're changing the subject. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> right. And one of the things that I found out that they are actually part of the Pottern family. Yes. And it's called Bad Cop, Bad Cop. And they are really um, not that far away from here in podcasting distance. They're only 60 miles away. Uh, they might even be closer than that in a straight line, if you think about it. Who drives in a straight line? Well, Hold on, I've got to get the reading. <laughs> well, no, because if you, looked, if you looked at a map, you know, <laughs> Reading isn't all that far. It's about an hour and a half away. What did I say? Yeah. From my, from my from my house, it's about an hour. Now. Yeah, but I drive pretty goddamn fast. Okay. I'm All like right. Winston Wolfe in Pulp Fiction. I drive pretty goddamn fast, so keep up. <laughs> is that what it is? <laughs> yeah, the wolf. I but know we what you're digress. About. But we digress. See, this is why we run over an hour. This is exactly why. Right. Yeah, Deuce gets in his cards. There's Deuce. He's on his way to Reading. I go see Bad Cop, Bad Cop. <laughs> so anyhow, yeah. Um, I started listening to them, and I'll tell you what. That's another show where you they're funny, and it takes you a couple episodes to get into it because there's 
there's some stuff that they talk about you don't really understand. Well, you got to get the lay of the land. You do like have to get any, the land. Like any podcast. If you just jump in and, and give a podcast. See, that's the thing. People, well, I try to listen to a podcast, but I didn't. Well, how many did you listen to? Well, just one. No, I well, didn't even listen to one. I listened to five right. minutes of one. Yeah, you, you can't. You, you have to listen to a couple. You know, you got to learn the lay of the land. You got to get the, you know, feel of things. You got to know what they're, you got to get a perspective on what they're talking about. Yeah. You also, yeah, it takes a little bit of an investment. Right. You know, that's why you try to put all your funniest stuff up front. But with us, I think our best stuff is in the rear. I think we, we get warmed up and then we really start rolling. Mm-hmm. Hence the two-hour podcasts. Ergo. Right. Exactly. So what was the story on? Okay. Here's, here's the, what had happened was um, our, our friends at Three is Comedy was on a podcast called Toe on the Trigger Podcast. Mm-hmm. And I'm a big fanboy, like you said. So, of course, <laughs> yeah, thanks. Make me sound like a real dick. But I just like, said you're a fan. <laughs> you're a fan of the show. I'm a fan of the show. But here's anyway. The, since you mentioned that, here's the thing. But yes, I, I, I say now, now it's going to be more than an I'm hour sorry. I got to stop time. you because you brought stuff up here, but I, and we should address it. The thing about it is those guys, yes, I'm a, I'm a huge fan of Three is Comedy. You know that. Mm-hmm. But I don't go fall over them. You gotta, no, you gotta, so now I'm not just a family. I was guffawing. You were guffawing over him a little bit. That's <laughs> okay. all. It's okay. I'm just yeah, listen, didn't they, it, now. Here's you're, your shovel. Keep digging. Um, ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, what had happened was they were, uh, yeah, they mentioned that they were going to be on the toe on the trigger podcast, which is also a scream. So fanboy um, runs over to toe and trigger. So, so right, fanboy runs a toe on a trigger podcast. And so I started listening to it. It was a good podcast. It was great. I mean, it's a little risque. It's not work friendly. So just to throw it out there, if anyone wants to give it a listen, I suggest giving it, it a listen. But don't do it with it. your kids in the car. Right, exactly. Be be prudent. And they tell you that, you know, he mm-hmm. you know, he warned you. Um but um and they were on that show. So then naturally I was listening to a couple and then a couple of podcasts later, Bad Cop, Bad Cop were guests. And they had mentioned another podcast that we both listened to. Which is and, uh, The Unwritable Rant. The Unwritable Rant with Juliet Miranda. Right. And and I'll let you pick it up from there because then I I basically stupid dopey deuce message John. Oh, of course. <laughs> so you know, well, here's and, the thing. I, and, he, and John, if you don't know John, John can't hold his water. If you ever, if there's like an old, if you want to get a secret around fast, telegraph, telephone, tell a John. Tell a Jimmy. Yeah. yeah so, oh, well, Jimmy. Oh, Jimmy. you and you and Jimmy, are, you can tell you're both related. You know. well, I, not, I got something now that I want to bring up with you, but I dare not do it because I know it'll blow up in my face. Well, and it has nothing see, to do now, with. That's, you can, now you can't say that because now you say you have to bring it up. All right. So let's finish the story. We'll okay. go to your story after that that All right so yes there is what happens is i like the unwritable rant i like juliet miranda yeah, i, I like her great. show I, I mean i'm not a fan of her doing the uh interviews because i could care i don't give a shit about her oh yes. she had don mcclain on a couple of weeks ago. i know i good. just don't care i don't really care and it's just right. it's a personal preference i don't like it but if she's telling me about a drunken story about her drinking bourbon and banging some guy i'm right there i'm listening i just like the way she tells a story all right this is the way it is all right, so you tell me that they were they kind of gave her the business. Bad cop, bad cop, kind of gave her the business. And I was listening to the podcast, and they did. There was like, hey, and the one guy sounds like Nick DePaul. I don't know which. There's Dave, and what's the other guy's name? Jerry, Jerry, and Dave. Hang Excuse me, I was I had my mic muted. I was coughing. You were coughing. Yes. Let's see. Yeah, Jerry and Dave. I'm sorry, guys. I'm still trying to learn the names. And even if I knew you personally, I would still forget your name. So. It's yeah, just that's that, what John does. It's yeah, his yeah it's my thing. The lack of memory is my thing. It's like a stick thing. So I'm listening, and uh, they they really go off on her. They're like, "Hey, you know, listen to this chick. I was drinking bourbon, not like this crazy chick. You know, she's like, oh, it's the Woody Oak, and so they're giving her the business. Well, you know me. <laughs> so I take I have a podcast app called Overcast, and you can share the episode in a tweet. That plays right at that moment. So, of course, I send a tweet and I said, hey, Juliet Miranda, <laughs> which <laughs> these guys need a hand uh, with bourbon. They're bourbon fans. Give a listen. So I'm waiting for this thing to explode, right? I'm waiting for 
I'm pull the pin, roll the grenade, walk away, watch those two people fight. But she just started giving them like bourbon to uh, like, oh, try this makers and try this. And, and she didn't bite. She didn't bite so, at all. So what we can clean from this is Juliet Moran was more of an adult than John. Exactly. She <laughs> pissed me off. <laughs> pissed me off. <laughs> so I immediately, I, cause of course I don't just say, oh, listen to this podcast. I listen to this at bad cop, bad cop podcast. So they get a copy of it too. And of course he sees it. He, you know, he types, he sends a tweet back, says, ha ha ha, look at you starting shit, which was kind of funny. But, um, I really, really do like that show. I'll tell uh-huh. you what, they b- make me belly laugh, and they're part of the I, I am so backed up on podcasts. I had to listen from being sick. Yeah. I mean, I've got about 72 podcasts. I, I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm with you. I, I'm, saying, I'm the same way. But the first thing that happened, as soon as I listened to that show, I listened to two episodes of that show, they went right to the top. I right. pushed them right up to the top because they were talking about, and I got in trouble for this too, uh, Randy Travis. Remember Randy Travis? Yeah. Okay. Well, he had a stroke. I don't know if you knew that. No, I didn't know that. I didn't know that either. He had a stroke and uh, had a great voice. And one of the f- songs that he was famous for singing was Amazing Grace. He had just a beautiful voice and did a beautiful rendition of Amazing Grace. Now, here's the thing. Like Dick Clark, once somebody has a stroke, you kind of kind of keep them out of the public eye. I know this sounds horrible, mm-hmm. but it is our, you're going to, if you're going to trot him out there, we're going to make... Well, you can't help but remember how he was. At, right. And, and that's he, exactly how it was on New Year's Eve those last couple of years after Dick Clark came back after the stroke. Right. Because you, you're watching it and it's, you know, New, Year, New Year's Rockin' Eve. That was his thing. And it was, it, was, it was hard. It was really... I mean, kudos to Dick Clark for trying. Right. But sometimes, you know, it's just time. Yeah. And I'm, I know I know what you're saying, and it's hard to like convey it without sounding heartless. And you know what happens to me is I convey it without sounding with with you know sounding yeah, well, heartless. You're, you're, well, you're a cold, ruthless son of a bitch. Exactly. Right. So what happened was not really. It's just no, the way it's John the truth. Is. I do that, but I'll go for the joke. I will go for the joke. Right. So it was New Year's, and uh, he had just got done doing his you know countdown and everything, and I said bottle of champagne, twenty five dollars, snacks, fifty five dollars. Listening to Dick Clark count from 10 to zero, priceless. And my wife, who was my ex-wife at the time, we were separate. Well, she's still my ex-wife. I haven't killed her yet. Um, she now, right see, on, right that's off, exactly like, why you can't say things like that. <laughs> <laughs> so she gets right on Facebook and in the message she says, you know something, you're an SOB because my father died of a stroke. I'm like... Yeah, but he wasn't on TV talking backwards. And with that, like, you know, her side of the family was like, oh, yeah, I said the same thing to my mom. And my mom yelled at me because, you know, my grandfather died of a stroke. Well, okay. Right. I guess if you have a stroke and you see somebody stroke out, like, hey, listen, if I have a stroke tomorrow and I'm with a drool cup and everything and I'm trying to talk, I want all of you to make fun of me. What are you saying? You yeah. got it, big boy. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Say that one more time. Exactly. <laughs> Welcome to the podcast. I'm down here. I'm with Zeus. I'm trying. We're going to talk about uh, what are we talking about today. Uh, <laughs> you know that kind of thing. Uh, so <laughs> that is my so, promo. So wrong on so many levels. <laughs> so that is my promo. You know, bad cop, bad cop podcast. It's uh, Jerry and Dave, and uh, again another podcast that's. Use a little, uh, a great funny podcast, but make sure your kids aren't in the car. <laughs> well, I have a friend that I knew from playing poker, and he lives out in Chicago now. And he said, Hey, I listened to your podcast. I couldn't listen to it because the kids were in the car. I'm like, Who told you to put, who told you to turn all the kids in the car? Yeah. It's not that they didn't, aren't going to learn the same language from you and your wife, but, uh, you know, so yes, yeah, some of these, this is what I love about podcasting because you can be yourself and you can listen to something. You have to worry about the FCC right. with the two thumbs up your ass. You can, yeah, well, yeah, you can do what you want to do here. And if you like it, you know, you listen. And if you but don't you like got to give every, every podcast that you listen, no matter what you are into, you'll find that flavor. But give those people time because if you just hang in for five, 10 minutes, hang in, eh, eh, they could be having it, a bad day. 
Yeah. Well, well not only that, you just might be, you, they might not have hit the meat of the podcast yet. And like I said, you got to learn who these people are. You got to learn what they're into and what they're about. You just can't make a snap judgment. Yeah. You can tell that uh, Jerry and Dave, is that their names? Like I can't remember now. God, what did I say their name were? Mm-hmm. Let me go back. I was coughing. I had like, Jerry and Dave. Look at me. <laughs> yeah. I got it right. <laughs> Jerry and Dave. So anyhow, um, they, I could tell they're big Stern fans. I think a lot of us that grew up in this area were Stern fans because this was the first market that he came in when he uh, started to simulcast out of New York. And uh, it was probably some of the best radio that was before the FCC clamped down. And uh, that's how I ended up doing what I'm doing now. You go, fanboy. Yeah, I am. I'm going to go fall. I'm falling right now. <laughs> Because jackass always takes it up the ass. Exactly. <laughs> so uh, when I was working for my father, we used to do industrial painting. So in other words, there would be a conveyor belt, and these parts would come by, and you'd have to paint them. And if you did that for like eight hours a day, two days was in a row. Was that the Quaker Town shop? Well, we actually had one in, in West Effort before the Quaker Town shop. Okay. The, the shop moved to Quaker Town. So if you had to sit there all day and just listen to that spray and nothing. So we used to always listen to the radio. And in the morning, we would always listen to John DeBella, who was, had the morning zoo. And I would sit there and listen. I said, I'm as funny as these guys. Why can't I do this? Well, you know, why am I not? Why am I painting this thing green when I could be sitting in there, you know, grab ass and making jokes? And that's why I decided to go to school for radio, TV, film. And then ended up going into the elevator business because – I'm afraid of heights and electricity. And in the elevator business, they work with uh, heights electricity, and electricity, electricity in high places. Yeah. Yeah. So, and then. Well, that's what I say. I went to the Art College of Philadelphia to learn how to sell lottery tickets and cigarettes. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's what I wound up doing. <laughs> <laughs> We're geniuses, man. <laughs> oh, so, anyhow. Uh, Bad cop, bad cop. Check it out. I think it's a it's a pretty good show. Yeah, what are. are you doing for Halloween? Do you? I am working. Oh, so you don't have to do any of that kind of stuff. You don't have to hand out that candy. Is, that is my weekend to work. Is it on a weekend this year? Yeah, it's on Monday, and my schedule is I will be working Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Okay, so you don't have to put up with any of that nonsense. By the time I get home, um, it's late, and and now the towns put curfews on, and which we didn't have when we were kids. Do you give out candy? Do you have a lot of kids in your neighborhood? Well, we it's fun. We when we bought the development, and I think every anybody that's gone through this can relate. When we bought here, we bought the house new of, with everybody else. There were no kids here, right? So the first Halloween, like we loaded up with candy and nothing. Well, yeah, there might have been like literally like eighteen kids the whole night. That was it. So, okay, so then you adjust and the next year you don't buy so much. Well, then just like they say, new house, new baby, we did it. I mean, we moved in here. Diane got pregnant. We had my son. So we're still buying candy, you know, based on the track record, like two or three years in. And then all of a sudden, where the hell did all these kids come from? So like we, we, yeah, we ran out of candy. And then you feel like a real schmo when you run out of candy on Halloween. They gave it like, like a stapler. Oh, and, yeah. So, <laughs> so then, we, then we went through about like a, a 10-year period, maybe 12-year period where we had mobs of kids nonstop. Like, like when we were kids, m- literally mobs of kids because everyone moved in. Everyone had kids and all the kids are growing up and everything. Well, now about two or three years ago, we noticed we're right. My son's 21 now. All the other kids grew up. They moved away. They're gone. They're not trick-or-treating no more. And we don't get the trick-or-treaters that we had, you know, five or six years ago. We just don't. So what kind of candy do you hang, Do you hand out? What do you usually give out? Uh, we're, we're real people. Um, we, we give out uh, – well, you know, what I mean by that is we give out full-size you're Snickers, one, one full-size of- Reese's peanut butter cups. You know, none of the, none of that miniature noise. We do we do full bore. Look at you, dude. Yeah, I, I oh, gotta yeah. I gotta hand it to you. That's that's standing. I mean, that's doing it. Now, my mom, she was the queen of holidays, and she would like run out. See, she got Genghis and my mother got a reputation because my mother would make like a a bag. And in that bag, you were getting like a full size Snickers. You got a, a bag of M and M's, and then she would throw in like those little sweet tart things, like all the kids love. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, those bitter things. She and she would she would put like four or five candies in a Halloween bag that looked like a pumpkin wrapped with a bow. I mean, she would spend like a couple of weeks wrapping these things up. 
well, you know, everything was like, oh, let's go to that house. And they would just wipe it out. Right. Boy, did they get a rude awakening when my father passed away and Joe bought the house. So. <laughs> The door opens up and a, a miniature Milky Way flies out the door at him. I don't even know what Joe does for. I know he might even just leave. I don't yeah, even he know. shuts the light off. And I'm sure I'll hear of that. I'll get a. I'll get, I'll get a correction. And fuck you, asshole! I give away shit. No, I give but, away. No, my mom and dad. They. My mom. She lived for like. She was kid Christmas and uh, she loved Halloween. She loved every holiday really. And uh, but yeah, she did Halloween up the old day, the old style man like. And I was like, there were these neighbors that we were kids when they were trick or treat. This is the epitome of cheapness. They were their names were the Hannigans. I mentioned them on the podcast before when we blew the front door oh, off the yes. okay, with the match head bomb. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, this is why. This is why they get picked on. Okay, you're a kid. You know, you're like nine, ten years old. You knock on the door, trick or treat, and then there's this. Well, we didn't do that. <laughs> So then, you know what she did? You know, like the Wrigley's gum, yes. double mint, yeah. spearmint, juicy fruit. She'd give you one stick? Oh, better than that. She'd break it in half. No, better than that. She was like, okay. And she would hold a stick over your bag and break out a pair of scissors and cut it in half. Right. And she threw one half in your bag and then another, the other half went into another kid's bag. Wow. I mean, that is like, Jesus, you know, that's like, no wonder you, why even bother? Well, no wonder you blew the front door off. Yeah, and, yeah, and soaked their windows and egged the house and various other things. They they never moved, I guess. They, well, we're cheap. We got to deal with this. I right. don't know. <laughs> they paid for that new door for all the, all I'll the tell money you what, they I'd saved rather, on that Wrigley's yeah, gum. Yeah, exactly. All this money we're, spe- we're saving on candy, we can buy a new door. Could you? I wouldn't even have the balls to do something. No, like I don't either. But what was your favorite <laughs> Halloween candy? Uh, well, see, back then I liked candy apples, and people see, used too. to make them. Oh, yes, the red caramel ones. and candy. I liked the candy apples, the yeah, cherry me too. red. With exactly. The cake. Oh, I they was were just going to tell you the story. We used to have a neighbor who she would make them, and she would make fifty of them. And she knew all the kids that were like right around her area. Yeah. And if, you know, you came up, she would, and you were going to get the candy, red candy apple. If some kids came up from like way down the street or something, she would say, hold on for a second. She'd give them candy bars. And then she'd say, okay, come here. And then she'd come in and you'd get the candy apple. Right. And we would always get like two or three candy apples. I don't even think anybody makes them anymore. Now, I think with the razor blade scare, um, right. Because think about it. If you put razor blades in an apple and you encased it in candy, you would never be able to tell. Never be able to tell. Right. Well, so we I think knew that's, her. That's we, I what mean, killed she was, it. Yeah, she, we knew her. And, you know, I guess we wouldn't take candy apples from people we didn't know. But, uh, yes, yeah, she was – that was – I mean, that was the best. And now I don't even think I would even try – I wouldn't even try to eat a candy apple now. I'd probably no, lose my front oh, teeth. Oh, I don't have the teeth for it anymore. I know. I, but, oh, I, back I'd, in every, the day. every filling in my tooth would fall right out. I know it. It's like, <laughs> so old. It sucks. So, <laughs> it sucks. Now what I do is I go and I get all the mounds and the almond joys out of the kids' bags because they won't eat them. And I kind of enjoy them now. But, uh, yeah. So uh, Halloween costumes – did you do ever? I don't ever remember us doing the Halloween costume party where we ever went somewhere. Did you ever do the Halloween? Um, what was your favorite Halloween costume when you, as you, as you were older, not when you were a kid, when you had the Hulk on and the mask on and you almost walked into traffic because you couldn't see out the mask? Um, I can't remember dressing up for Halloween as an adult. Really? Um, never went to I mean, a party. It's, it's, I mean, it's decades. Well, of course, Decade. it, Yeah. Um. I did have a ninja costume once. That was kind of cool. Okay. So, but yeah, I mean, uh, in school, I won. Um, oh, I see, can't wait I, for this. I, in second grade, you know, in my school, we had the split session. We went to school in the morning. We went home for lunch. And then we came back in the afternoon. Back then, you could do that because most of the moms were home. Right. You know, then that all that's all different now, of course. So on Halloween, we would they would dismiss us like an extra half an hour early and we would go home and we would get changed in our costumes and we would come back. And then the school, we would have a parade through the whole town. It was, it was uh, kindergarten through sixth grade. The seventh and eighth graders didn't do it. They were and, too cool. Well, you know, it was junior high, you right. know, so, but we would march through school in costume and everything. I mean, through the town in costume, we'd have a parade and everyone would be, you know, taking pictures, all the parents, it was really cool. It was a great town to grow up in. 
And then we would go back to our classrooms and we would have a Halloween party. And this the teachers would always try to guess who the kid was. Mm-hmm. And in the second grade, um, my mom went to our neighbor across the street and had some old – she used to make her own dec- her own costumes. Well, what they did, they had this witch's costume like with the rubber mask and the, like the real pointy chin and everything. And I said, you know what? I'll take that one. You know, and, you know, my mom was like, really? I says, yeah, because they'll they'll expect the girl to be dressed as a witch. They right. would expect the boy to be dressed as a witch. So it was like the long black cloak and the cape and the, the big yarn wig with the green rubber mask and the big giant green hat, you know, her black hat. And um, I won. She, she she went through. She exhausted everybody. And then finally it was like there was nobody left. And then I was the last one. And I wound up getting the prize. So that was pretty cool. Well, now you can't go out this Halloween as a clown. No. Nah, well, you yeah. can't dress up as a clown. So uh, what do you think some of the tasteless costumes for 2016 are? Um. Okay. Now I have a different take on tasteless because we had this discussion in the break room at work. And, and if you are – see, you had daughters. Yes. So you can probably relate to this. I don't know what happened like in the last 15 years, but now you have to dress your eight-year-old girl as a whore. Like every okay. costume is real hoary. Right. You know, they can't know, where are the princesses? Where's where's Minnie Mouse? I mean, like well, even the like, teenagers do that stuff too. Right. It's super slutty. Came and if I was a movie. teenager, I would have really appreciated it. But then when you get older and you have kids of your own, it's like, uh eh. Yeah. Well, that movie, uh what is it? Not Nasty Girls. What was it? Mean Girls with uh, mean girls? Yeah, Mean Girls. They always said that, you know, Halloween was a way to, for teenage girls to dress up like a slut. Mm-hmm. So one of the ones that uh, everybody's are upset about is the Kim Kardashian robbery Halloween doll, <laughs> which is a long black wig and uh, a gag and uh, a white house coat and then uh, a pair of handcuffs. And then this one I like. I figured you'd like this one. It's the Hillary Clinton um, correctional office. Or oh, the orange jumpsuit. The orange jumpsuit with uh, Clinton on the back in letters. Right. A lot of people are going as Donald Trump this year. Right. Uh, one of the other ones that they say is very tasteless is the Harembe, the Gorillo. The Gorillo. The Gorillo. Who knew that Harembe would become such a superstar? I, you know, it's like one of those things. It's like James Dean. You know, he died. He was you know, more famous as, you know, dead. Like, I, mean, I mean, every day I, I think there must be 20 new Harembe memes. Right. Exactly. <laughs> it's like, nobody would have figured? No, nope, he was alive. Nobody knew what the damn Gorilla's name was. Now, all of a sudden, everybody knows what his name is. Yeah. <laughs> um. The Caitlyn Jenner costume is where a guy is dressed up in the white pantsuit like Caitlyn Jenner. Right. But he's usually a guy that looks like me, you know, with the hairy arms and the hairy back. <laughs> it's got the sash on. It says Caitlyn. Yeah. That's, a, that's a risky costume to put on because, uh, you know, what happens is everybody starts drinking and then the, the women get drunk and they're like, they see the hairy back in that costume. And then they just start saying, hey, you know what we're going to do? We're going to wax your back. Uh, and then the guy ends up with a waxing that he really yeah. didn't want. Yeah, but some guys pay handsome amounts of money for that. So, All right. So let me ask you this question. Okay. <laughs> this is really getting off topic, but. Would you ever, have you ever, or would you ever get a pedicure? No. Did you ever think about it? No. What would you think of a guy that has a pedicure or gets a pedicure uh, on the regular? Whatever, whatever floats your – I mean if you have like diabetes and it's something that – like a medical condition and you have to get that different. None of that's going on. Okay. Now, I think that's a little swishy. Guess who gets a pedicure? It's the Jimmy. Oh, Jimmy. What really? Do do? What do you do? What do you do? It's the Jimmy. I was shocked. Jimmy. What do you do? What do you do? I'm shocked. Do do? I, you know, one of the things when he – Anyhow, when he called me and we were doing that whole thing, he's sitting there like, where, where are you at? And he's like, oh, I'm getting a pedicure. He's right. going to kill you. I'm like, seriously, what are you doing? <laughs> Here you are taking all Jimmy Street cred away from him by telling people he gets a pedicure. <laughs> and I'm like, dude, I'm, what are you, out of your mind? And he's like, dude, you got to try it. He says, yeah, they come in, they rub your feet, they put in a hot bath. And he must have said hot bath four times. So he was 
<laughs> he really likes that hot bear. <laughs> Gets all the dead skin off. And I'm thinking Ooh. to myself, I'm 55 years old. I've never had one. If I went in there and put my feet in a bucket of stuff to take the dead skin off, when I got out of there, it would look like pudding. That bear. <laughs> There's a visual. I can imagine now. I put my, I walk in and all of a sudden they all start speaking, you know, because you know they're all Korean or from another land. <laughs> and, uh, you know, they come in and they start speaking in their language. Who's taking Fat Boy over here? Not to me. Not to me. Yeah, uh, now, I, I never, never even thought about getting a pedicure ever or a manicure for I take care of my own crap. That's one thing I never, I got friends that still chew their nails. Right. And I skeeve. Right. And that, that's one thing I've never, I mean, I, I clip can't do my, that either. I clip my nails like every other day. Right. Like a, I'm like a surgeon. My nails are like so yeah. short and everything. But putting them in my mouth and like gnawing, uh, you know, I'm not doing that. I don't know where I've been. It's true. <laughs> you know, I can see it now. Well, we'll, see, well, you know, here's the other thing. People that, that chew their nails and all, like when you, you know, go to the bathroom and you have to wipe – you know, every once in a while, there's some remnants, you know, and even if you wash well, your Well, I don't know how you're wiping, but- I'm just saying, I, every once in a while, there might be no, an accident. You might no, get- when I go in there, it's like the mummy lives. I wrap that hand about 72 times in toilet paper. Really? I mean, I can, ha- I can handle nuclear waste with- like, So it's just like, yeah, that, that just, I wash my hands anyway, but I don't- I know, but you don't know if you get any, little, No, no, well, I'm no. not doing that. You're right. I'm like a cat. I'm a clean shitter. So I, I don't know what to tell you. So, so do you bury, do you bury it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, it's just nah. I just nah, I'm not. But I, I get what you're saying. Yeah. Well, not not even that you're doing that. But I mean, let's say you're puttering around in the garage, right? Or you're digging in the garden. I mean, you don't know where you. You know, I wear gloves. You know, I I keep my I keep my hands clean and my. I was always pretty fastidious about that. Ooh. But I'm not, I was never a nail biter. Fifteen of our, or forty five of our uh, fifty listeners just ran for a dictionary. Not or bright. <clears throat> you think so? Yeah. That's good. Yeah, but I just uh, when he was telling me that story, I was like, I don't, I don't know how many people I know. They get how many guys I know. They get. I think if you were to ask people far younger than us, like thirty and under, you would get a higher percentile of people that get pedicures that probably would admit to it. Right. I mean, there's probably guys out there that do it. No, no way, man. All right. So but no, I, no, I'm not doing that. Question for the break room: How many of you dudes get? Uh, oh, it'll come pedicure? up in the break room now. I assure you. Oh, it'll come up. So How many Dave was at the wedding. He said he enjoyed the last podcast. Oh, did he really? I sat with Dave at the table, yeah. Ah. Oh, how about yeah. that? Yeah. We had uh, a great time. We didn't, oh, that's well, because I saw the picture of you at a wedding. I wasn't sure if you were, it was just then or if that was an old yeah, that was that was that was the event. Now, yeah. does the, does the uh, tradition live on? Did, is, was there a bathroom picture? No. You didn't take one? No. How come? I went to a wedding. I didn't bring my camera with me. You have a phone. Yeah, how you doing that? Really? Yeah, I got 72 bathroom shots. I don't need any more. <laughs> how did the, okay, so now we got to bring the listeners up to speed. Whenever Deuce would go to a wedding. Well, our family would a do A family my, wedding. My cousins, yeah. I have, a, I have a shitload of cousins. Who started, who started it? Did you start me? the picture? Yeah. Okay. So what happens is they'd all be at a wedding, so all the men would go into the men's room. And they would all get in the stall and hang all over the stall, and there'd be a picture. You would take a picture of it. Mm -hmm. And you had 72 bathroom? Well, I'm exaggerating, but I have probably over the year. Joe just posted two of them on Facebook. But the one I I took, the other one was from a wedding that he was in. And Mm -hmm. um, that's why they're all in the same tuxedos. But um, I, I probably have about... 15 to 20 of them over of different events. I don't remember years. being in one at your wedding. Um, we didn't do one. At your yeah, wedding. there's one. Was I in it? No, I probably wasn't. Yes. I, yeah, you're in it. I am in it. In fact, I think we dragged a woman into the bathroom with us. I would have remembered that. Yeah, not, not the way we were drinking. You wouldn't. <laughs> I really I don't think I was that drunk. That well, dude, we were in the limo, and then we oh. had the cocktail hour afterwards, and then we had the cocktail party at the at the hall, and then we were tap dancing like Fred Astaire in that big empty ballroom. That's true, you know, because it was all it was a parquet court. I wonder who the drove. way he put. What's that? Did I ever tell you this? Did I tell you the story about that with Sa- Sandy? How you almost? Did you, did oh, it? you mean before you got to my house? Yeah, yeah. Well, it's legendary. 
<laughs> you almost didn't have a best man in a. Yeah, that's why. Yeah, that's why we didn't have rings at the wedding. It was, it was I would, you know, gang goes, ah, John Buchanan just turned this house upside down. The cummerbund broke, and then he forgot the rings, and then he. <laughs> Uh, if we go down this path, that's like another hour. You know that. So right, we'll sh- we'll shelve the the uh, story <laughs> of Deuce's wedding because I barely remember it. To be quite honest with you. Then we had the shotguns. Oh. We took the shotgun pictures, and my mom said, "You're not going to shoot them in here, are you?" <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ! Could you imagine that? <laughs> Mom having like no knowledge whatsoever of what a shotgun would do to like plaster and ceiling. <laughs> <laughs> You're not going to shoot those in here, are you? They're not. <laughs> they're not cap guns. That <laughs> was funny. That is yes. Okay, so we will table that for the next podcast. So I guess we better get on out of here. And uh, again, if you since we've the podcast we've mentioned that I think that are really pretty good, uh, the unwritable rant with Juliet. Moran, and then um, I hope I said her name. Bad cop, bad, bad cop, bad cop, bad, bad cop. And then toe on the trigger, toe on the trigger podcast, which is a podcast about suicide. No, it's not. No, it's not. it's a cool <laughs> name though. It's, you know what? Toe on the trigger. It's from suicide. That's a suicide thing. Yeah, well, that's I think how Kurt No Brain did it. Right. Yes. Toe on the trigger. Right. And also three is comedy. One of our favorite podcasts. One of, Deuce is really, really a fan of three is. <laughs> All right, I'll stop. He's all he's pouting over there. Yeah, I'm not pouting. <laughs> Just being quiet. <laughs> Same thing. <laughs> and if next week, if I can get to that test, I want to do the, the internet lie detector test. Why don't you try it now? Just for shits and giggles. Oh, I knew you were going to ask me that. Here yeah, we go. See, you should have bought it up. It'll probably pop right up now. Yeah. Ding. Need a, where's the clock? Where's the clock sound effect? Oh. We need Hold something. On. Nothing. Still just yeah. spinning. All right, we tried. Yeah. All right. You get an A for effort. Here we go. All right, everybody. Thanks again for listening to the Brand X podcast. And you know what? We always want you to uh, join in the conversation. It's just me and Deuce here talking. But if you want to add something to the conversation, you want to tell us a story about Halloween. What's your favorite Halloween candy? Uh, we're all up for that. And you can find us by going to brandxpodcast.com slash contact. And uh, you know me, I always got to beg once a podcast for a podcast review on iTunes. So if you feel so obliged, <laughs> go to brandxpodcast.com slash iTunes. All right, there we go. And uh, now I'm going to have music over your music. And I gotta, I'm going to have to cut the music to put that in there because we don't – I play them. See, now I have to really roll back the curtain because it sounds like we hit the mark every time. And I play the music underneath the – the uh, when I talk out. And this is why I don't do this. Mm-hmm. I'm about ready to go on Fiverr. Fiverr is a, uh, a website where for $5 you can get somebody to do like a 30-second uh, readout. And I'm about ready to have some chick do it. So I was like, I'm going to say, okay, we're out of here. And then it says, you know, thank you for listening to the Brand X podcast. And, but then I guess it wouldn't be as funny with me tripping over my words. What do you think? You oh, think I should, yeah. should I get it? Yeah, I would. Why not? Right. Why not? Why not? All right, let's try yeah. that. Yeah. Michael Corleone did this and Michael Corleone did that. And I said, sure, why not? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, everybody. Guess what? This is our music hanging out, heading out. <laughs> and have a happy Halloween. <laughs>